Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start jumping into the science of training and coaching right now. But before I even start on the physiology and the anatomy and the biomechanics and all that fun stuff, at least I hope you think it's fun, I want you to remember something. Knowing the science is great, but it really doesn't matter if you just randomly know science. You have to know, more importantly, how to apply it. So as we go along here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the science, but, but I really need you to really start thinking about, okay, how is this going to apply? If you don't always see it, that's okay, because we're actually going to stop at times and we're going to point out to you how does it apply. So at, uh, let's go ahead and get started with exercise physiology and start thinking about, once again, application. Well, exercise physiology begs the question, what is exercise physiology? Well, first, before I even get into the definition, I want you to look at three different pictures. I want you to look at a picture over here of my friend who's the bodybuilder, my other friend, the yoga instructor, my other friend, the swimmer, right? Well, let's think about it. Yeah, there's definitely genetic components here, and that's something you're going, always going to have to take into account when you're training someone. But these individuals' bodies have adapted based on the exercise stress they've placed on it, okay? So that's what exercise physiology is all about. Exercise physiology is the study of how exercise affects the cells and organ systems of the body. So in other words, if we look at the bodybuilder, he most likely has the most lean body mass. Look at the picture, right? He's got the most muscle, all, all of them. The yoga instructor most likely is the most flexible. And once again, most likely the swimmer has the greatest aerobic capacity, or in other words, has the best cardiovascular endurance. Their bodies have individually adapted to the exercise stress placed upon it. So that's what exercise in physiology is, exercise physiology in action. It's the sum total of all human physiological responses and adaptations to physical activity. Well, how does that happen? I'll take a step back even more. There's this nice little guy named Hans Soleil. He was a physician, and he created what's called the gas theory, or general adaptation syndrome, okay, gas. So let's look at this little chart here for a second. At any moment in time, a person ha is capable of a certain level of performance. We're gonna call that work capacity. Well, if you're able to perform at that level, look at our little chart over here, that, that where the little dot is. Well, if you put a stress on the body, okay, initially performance is going to go down, whether it be a good stress or a bad stress. Hopefully, when done right, exercise should be a good stress. We're going to find out exercise can be done wrong, in which case it's a bad stress. But no matter what, a good stress or bad stress, initially work capacity or performance is going to initially go down. That's called the alarm stage. But the cool thing about the human body is that it's incredibly adaptable. It adapts to the stresses you place on it. So after the alarm stage, with proper recovery, you're going to go into the resistance stage. And that's basically showing that how the body has adapted to the stress you placed on it. So next time it sees that stress again, it can handle it even better. Now mind you, if you overstress the body and you go for too long, too hard, too much stress, eventually you go to the exhaustion stage and performance goes down. Now, once again, this is just for stress in general, this gas theory. Now, let's go ahead and apply it to exercise in general, okay? So, let's look at this other little chart. It looks very similar for optimal training. What do we see? At the first little dot, all right, that first time, you see a certain amount of work capacity, a certain amount of performance. You put the stress of proper exercise on it, and once again, initially, performance goes down. But notice what happens. In the recovery stage, between exercise sessions, exercise bouts, performance goes up before you go to the next session, right? Or the next exercise bout, performance should go up. Now the important thing here is proper exercise adaptations happen with the right, here are the two keywords, quality and quantity. The right quality and quantity exercise stress. The right exercise at the right intensity, right? Quality and quantity, the right amount, the right intensity, the right, the right exercise for the individual's goals, followed by the right quality and quantity of recovery. That means proper sleep, making sure they're getting the proper nutrition, lowered stress levels those other times. So if you want optimal exercise training and optimal results, you have to balance both the right exercise, quality and quantity, with the right recovery. Both are essential. Everything that you do good for the body during, say, you do a one-hour training session, it doesn't happen during that one hour. It happens the other 23 hours of the day when your body's adapting to that one hour. 
You've got to have both ends. You could design the exact perfect workout for someone and their individual goals, but if they aren't getting the right recovery after, guess what? They're not going to be meeting their goals, not safely and not efficiently, and that's your job. So your job isn't just for the hours that they're with you, but also the hours they're not with you. You have to educate them to make those healthy lifestyle choices. What happens if you don't? Let's say you train them too high intensity or they're not poor quality exercise, which means you didn't choose the right exercise for their goals or they're doing it poorly, I mean poor technique, poor mechanics, uh, and just the intensity and or the intensity is way too high. And then it's followed up by insufficient recovery, not enough sleep, not enough time, poor nutrition. Guess what? That is the definition of overtraining. You could be just beating them into the ground and actually the progress goes down. So we don't want that either. Now that's very common with elite athletes, especially things, people who train for, say, mixed martial arts. Um, overtraining in that sport is very, very common. The other extreme is detraining. What happens if for some reason you take a long time off? Okay, well, eventually, if you have too much rec excessive recovery time and or you know, the workouts just aren't happening frequently enough, well, once again, performance does go down. So the key to proper training is finding that good balance, quality and quantity of exercise, followed up by the quality and quantity exercise recovery. Now, before we get into the rest of exercise physiology and then the anatomy and the mechanics and all that, I want to talk about one other concept with you. It's called the kinetic chain. Because those are the first three systems of the body that we're going to be stressing. The kinetic chain, okay, are the chain of systems that cause movement in the body. So basically we're looking at the nervous system, okay, the control center of your body, which tells the muscles, all right, to move the, the skeletal system, the bones. So those are going to be the first three systems we're going to study is the nervous system, followed by the muscular system, followed by the skeletal system. Those three systems make up the connect chain. That's not to say the other systems are not important and not involved in movement and exercise, because obviously they are. Obviously, um, your digestive system takes in all your fuel sources, your food, your, your respiratory system brings in the oxygen to also be able to process it. Your cardiovascular system delivers it all. So that's, all those systems are needed for energy uh, production and so forth. But purely for movement, the first things we're gonna look at once again, the connect chain, the nervous system, the muscular system, and the skeletal system.